Friends, today we have a very exciting day. An entirely new Cadillac has turned up on our doorstep, and not just a regular old Cadillac. We are talking about a Cadillac that has, are you ready for this? 640 horsepower. So while we work on the full episode, let's go over the highlights, but a little bit of a special surprise. We are joined by the chief engineer of Cadillac for this highlight preview, Dave Leone. Moto Man, it's good to be here. It is incredible to be here, because where are we? We are in Wisconsin. Why, was, why did you pick Wisconsin? We picked this track because this is Road America, and it has a 4.1 mile race course. Four miles? 4.1 miles. Oh my God, I can't Okay, wait till you get to there. go around it very quickly. But no, with the long straights, it gives us a chance to demonstrate what 640 horsepower can do, to stretch its long legs. I, so a little bit behind the scenes here, I, I'm very excited to drive this car. You and I have been talking about this for a long while. You're going to love it. But being completely honest with you, yeah. I don't know what I'm more excited about, the car or the track, because I have never driven here before. It's a fun track. It's, uh, this is Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Beautiful place. Beautiful. Not far from Lake Michigan. Yeah. Um, but it's a gorgeous track that is very well maintained and uh, it's got lots of elevation change, lots of uh, cross camber, off camber curves. And, uh, so I'm feeling very confident that you're throwing me into a 640 horsepower car in a track I don't know. It's going to eat it up. Okay, it's well, it's gonna gonna eat or eat me up, one well, of the two. Uh, yeah, so let's happen. go over some of the highlights for the folks while you and I work on the full episode. What do we got underneath the hood? Well, we have a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 engine putting out 640 horsepower, 630 pound feet of torque, all aluminum block. 630 on the torque? 630 on the torque, and it feels oh endless. God. Where does the torque come in at 630? Uh, it comes in at 3,400 RPM. 6,400 RPM is peak horsepower. Made it up to an eight speed transmission with paddle shifters. Paddle shifters. Paddle shifters, make real magnesium paddle shifters. Now, if I were to count, how yeah. many pedals does this car have? It has two pedals, all now, you need. Is there a curmudgeon edition for me with There three is no pedals? curmudgeon edition for you. You know, in this segment, the manual transmissions penetrate so lowly that there's only a few guys like you out there. But uh, that's, that means I'm more special. You are special. I've known that for years. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Really and uh, anyways, but no, it, it just doesn't make good business sense. The, there's not enough penetration to make it worth a while. What if I were to like throw you an extra 500 bucks? How about not going to do it. Not going to okay. do it. But no, uh, and, uh, and oh, by the way, the yeah. automatics shift faster than any manual, even the most professional race car driver cannot shift in the 150 milliseconds that this one's capable of shifting I get that. In. From a theory point of view, I totally get it. But you know what? The reason why I love you so much is because you're honest. You, yeah. you didn't try to, you know, give yeah. us a line of bold. You actually said, this is the reason why. So yeah. I'll let you off the hook easy on right. this one. Thanks. Uh, I see some carbon fiber here. What do you we do. Got? You know, first of all, every CTSV has a carbon fiber hood. Oh, the whole hood? The entire hood is carbon fiber, exposed carbon fiber weave on the bottom mm. side. But when you order the uh, CFZ package, uh, it gives you a carbon fiber extractor on the hood. It gives you the lower chin spoiler. Okay. It's also carbon fiber. It gives you spats on the front of the uh, oh, front fenders here. Yeah. Yep, and that helps deflect the air around the tires for uh, lower drag. You get a carbon fiber rear spoiler that's another 30 millimeters taller. It helps uh, reduce lift and create actual downforce. Now is that learning from the Z06? Is that what you're doing there? They do kind of um, our our teams work closely together. Yeah. Uh, we apply that. It's really learnings from uh, all of our racing efforts through the years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually go ahead and we manage the uh, pitch moment about the car with uh, using uh, aerodynamic modeling. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually create additional understeer as a result of the downforce we create. And uh, comparing this to the old car, the car is actually about 100 pounds lighter, but it has 150 pounds more downforce mm -hmm. in the corner of the track that we do a lot of our work at than the uh, outgoing car. So now that's an important point you bring up there about understeer. We just had an episode where we, I'm not going to give away the manufacturer, but let's just say a very small, well-loved roadster. Okay. How they dial in specifically understeer sure. for literally by design yes now um, why would you guys do that in a car why would you deliberately sure. dial that in sure um, because understeer gives you the ability to remain in control and you always get a little bit less than you asked for 
okay? And so you know what's going to happen. When you have oversteer, okay, you get more than you expect and more than you requested, all right? And oversteer uh, can get you into trouble in such that if you go into a corner and if you get a lot more steering response than you expected, you can actually turn it into a uh, rotating moment that you don't want to have. I understand. Whereas if understeer, you get a little bit less response than you asked for, you can dial in a little bit more steer and then get what you want. Um, as opposed to uh, getting far more than you asked for. And when you're in a high-speed corner, uh, the last thing you want is uh, far more than you asked for. Now, is that more important because this car has such higher limits? It is. It is. Uh, you know, um, the reaction is a function of the velocity or the mm -hmm. speed of the, the car squared. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so um, understeer is far more important at vehicles that are capable of 200 miles an hour. It's one thing to hold onto a car that's starting to you know, rotate at 80 miles an hour. Um, place that at 200 miles an hour so and it's a whole so new You're, you're telling me this is a 200 mile an hour car? This here? is the fastest Cadillac ever. So out first, of the wrapper from the factory? Right from the factory floor, this thing will go 200 miles an hour without a single modification. Do you now understand why I call this man the mad scientist? You have proven it. Yeah, well, we're glad um, to bring it to you. <laughs> you are truly a giver. Uh, now, let's switch gears a little bit. What okay. I do with these preview films is just give a highlight, and I think we've given more than a highlight here, and you answer one of my questions. Now let's shift gears and answer some of your questions that came from the ATSV episode. Okay. Sure. Uh, but a little, uh, I guess we have to go over the syllabus of how we're going to cover this. Okay. Because we are, you and I are working on a full episode of the First Drive review at Road America. That'll be coming up after this. And then you just wrapped your deep your tech dive thing okay so and that's just we, like you did on the rotisserie with the ATSV that's coming up and then after that there's going to be a, a Q&A from the ATSV so there'll be more questions but I wanted to bring up three from you guys uh, the first comes from I think arguably your biggest fan like you have a guy in Saudi Arabia that worships ah. the ground you walk uh -oh. on Okay. His name is Amro, and he chases Cadillacs around Saudi Arabia taking pictures, okay. and he sends them to me. All right. If you had a Twitter account, I'm sure okay. he'd send them to you. Anyway, Amro comes up with a very good question. Now, you're doing this as a V-Sport. There's the base car with a couple of different engines, and now the V-Series. Is there going to be a V-Sport for like an ATS or like a CT6 coming down the road? Uh, quite possibly. Um, there will be more V-Sports as we go forward. Mm -hmm. We have none to announce tonight, but uh, there will be additional V-Sports uh, in the model lineup. Just stay tuned. Okay, so Amro, there's your answer. We'll get back to you on that. Uh, the next question comes from Andy Hove, or Andy Hoove. I'm, uh, Andy, if I'm butchering your name, I apologize. He brings up a very good question because you notice how like very like high-end car manufacturers, Mercedes, Bentley, everybody is chasing, going down market to get volume. Now, the question that Andy poses, is Cadillac looking to do a sub-$30,000 car? Short answer is no, but let me tell you why. Okay. All right? uh, we're working quite hard to raise and elevate the brand so that it's more prestigious, so that uh, people think more highly of it, and it enables us to, uh, to grow the market. And we plan on doing that like you see with the CT6 that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It's a new top-of-the-line sedan. That's where our growth is expected to be. Um, you don't elevate the prestige of a brand by creating more low-priced entries. So you guys, in this case, are being the contrarian investor. We, we, in the we, we are. The we, again, um, in the luxury space, uh, a good 50% of the price that's attributed with it mm -hmm. is a result of what they perceive the brand to be. Totally agree with you. Would you expect Rolex to bring out a $1,000 watch? No. All right. Don't expect Cadillac to bring out a $25,000 car. And once again, a very honest answer. And this is why we've come to love you over the All years. Right. So here's another question for you. And this is from, uh, I'm definitely going to butcher this name. It's Kula Gulia. Kuka Gulia. I think okay. it's Kula or Kuka Gulia. Okay. It's G-U-L-U-A. Uh, and this is another interesting question. This is on the ATS. Uh, the gauges on the ATS. I personally, I think they do need some changes. I would agree with Kuka on this one. Um, are there going to be changes to the to the gauges, the instrument panel on the ATS? Actually, there will be. Uh, new for 2016, starting with the ATS-V, 
which we start shipping here uh, in a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Um, there is an improved gauge package, so we have improved graphics and fonts and the uh, bezel has uh, been improved and so the appearance of the gauges is uh, upgraded uh, starting 2016. Okay, fantastic. And with that, we're going to save the rest of the questions for the Q&A, the more deeper one we're going to do with some of the questions that came in from the ATSV episode as well as you were part of the preview of a Porsche episode. So I, I see how I have elevated ah, you. I'm, I'm actually doing fantastic. this uh, even without you asking. So with that, we're going to leave you guys. We're going to work on the full episode here in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, and Road America. I'm incredibly excited to drive this car on the track. Uh, but we need to leave you guys with a question. And my question is this. Uh, so this paint here, this is, this is a limited edition, right? It is. It's called Crystal White Frost, and it's a matte finish. It's incredible. And, you guys uh, got to see this thing. In we person. will be building uh, several hundred of these. Uh, yet oh, so this, this month. is a very limited. Edition. Oh, very limited edition, uh, and only available on the V series. Okay. So my question to you is this: Do you feel this limited edition, which is only a couple couple hundred of these things, do you feel this one will have collector car value down the road? Like, are we going to turn up at say, like Gooding or RM auctions? in Scottsdale or Pebble Beach in 25 years, and this will be going for more than what you are selling it for. I think we should start going to those to find out. I th well, with the wagon, the CTSE wagon, I think they are, will already, they're yep. already gonna go above, or already are above retail, mm -hmm. not a lot. Mm -hmm. I think it's just pacing inflation. So the question to you guys is, do you feel this one in this finish will be a collector item? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, until next time, I think you and I need to head out and get some cheese curds for dinner. This Let's evening. go do it. Okay, right. ciao. And a spotted cow. <laughs>